today's video we'll be talking about wiring a compressor we're going to talk about wiring a compressor based off the schematic you can see here when we remove the panel the schematics are right on the side of the condensing unit now here if we look at the schematics there are a few things we want to take note of right here we have the fan motor this is going to be your compressor right here this is going to be your contactor and these are all the wires that feed in between one of the questions I often get in regards to comments on my channel is how to properly wire a compressor and I'll find a lot of times it's simply an issue of miswiring due to colors a lot of times here if you look at the panel you'll see that there's different colors you'll see here off of the start from the compressor it's labeled Y this is R which is labeled the run and it's red and in the common we have black but a lot of times especially when you're putting in a new compressor the harness and the wires that feed to the new compressor especially if you buy the individual packaging the colors are different. Once you familiarize yourself with the different components, this will help you in your diagnosing and troubleshooting of the system. When you're wiring your compressor, you have three wires. You have your common, your run, and your start. What happens oftentimes is, I've seen this many times in the field, especially guys who are new to the industry, is they'll have a new compressor, they'll basically just cut the wires and then just try to tie the wires on, wire nut it based off colors and not off of what the schematic reads. So here, if we have a compressor, in this specific system, we just took the compressor out and put a new compressor in today. The compressor here has the common wire. Now if you follow the common, it's labeled black and you'll follow it all the way through It'll run up and tie into your contactor onto the T1 side. Now we look at our run. The wire is labeled R red and it feeds all the way through. It goes up and that ties into the T2 terminal of your contactor. Your L1 and your L2, here you can see are your outdoor power supply. This is going to be the 240 volts coming in, 120 on each side, that feeds to your contactor. Once your low voltage energizes your contactor, your contactor engages, the incoming voltage then goes up and feeds to the compressor. Now the last wire on our compressor is going to be here. This is our start. You can see here that it's, it's labeled Y, which is yellow, and that's gonna feed to the ERM on our run capacitor. The reason I decided to do this video today is because the technician that was working on this specific system took out the old compressor, put in the new compressor, but didn't check to see where the common run and start were. The new compressor we had to retrofit for this system, but the common, the run and the start were in different positions. And what he did was he wired the common and the run but when he wired it, he took the T1 and swapped it with the T2. And so he was unable to start the new, compa the, the new compressor that was installed. So when he called me, the first thing I asked was, did you wire it according to the schematics? And he said no, that he had wired it based off the old ones. And what happened was, although we have yellow, red, and black, the wiring that was there had two black wires and so it was just a matter of putting one in the wrong spot 
And this is why I try to discourage guys from learning or training to do it based off the coloring of the wires because you don't know who did what before you got there. And so your default for your mind in troubleshooting your system should always be to check the schematics. The schematics will tell you, it doesn't matter if we put one compressor, two compressors, three compressors within 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, the schematics always gonna stay the same in, in regards to wiring. So right now, if we went and we installed a compressor, we would look on the side of the panel of the condensing unit, we would look at the schematics, we would see the fan motor, we would see the compressor, and we would see the contactor. And what we would do is we would just look here and we would say, okay, where is the common coming from my new compressor? It may not be here, it may be over here. So what you'll do is you'll just follow common. Common's over here. Okay, look on this schematic, common. We trace it. Goes to T1. So it doesn't matter where your common is on your new compressor, that wire is always gonna go to T1 on your contactor. You run is gonna go here to T2 on your contactor. Your start, we're gonna trace it, goes up, and it's going to go to the erm on your run capacitor. So at this point, we know how to wire the compressor. And this is always gonna be the same for every system. You're always gonna look at the schematic, and you're always gonna trace the three leads coming off and trace them to which terminal they go to. And again, don't get discouraged when you see all these different wires and all these leads going to different places. You wanna kind of just look at the entire diagram. And you can see here, you know what a fan motor is. That's obviously the fan motor coming off of the condensing unit. You know what the compressor is. You know what the contactor is. And you know here what the capacitor is. And from here, you can go ahead and just start making or traveling using your lease to find out which wires go where. And as I showed you in the last schematic video, it's so much simpler not to look at this as a whole, but to just start with the compressor. Once you know where the wires go to the compressor, you'll be able to say, okay, I know how to wire the compressor off of the schematics. Then you'll jump to the fan motor. And you can see here we have the fan motor and we'll just use the fan motor and do the same thing. So what I want to do is I want to encourage you guys, especially those new to the industry, is to better familiarize yourself with troubleshooting and diagnosing based off the compressor, off the schematics for your compressor, your fan motor, for your capacitor, and for your contactor because the schematic is always going to stay the same. It doesn't matter what system you go to. This is especially true when you start to work on the furnaces that have the boards in the attic. The wiring is always going to show you where you need to go. And the purpose of this video was to share with you, I get a lot of comments on my channel in regards to properly wiring the compressor. And I don't want to get into the habit, as I said, of just looking at a compressor and saying this wire goes here, this wire goes there. Because you want to familiarize yourself with the schematic so that when you're out in the field, you'll know which wires go where in that specific system or unit. When you take out the old compressor, just make note on the new compressor where the common, the run, and the start are. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section. If this video was a help, if it was informational, please subscribe.